Yeah. So I've started the recording now, um, and uh, so if I go to my uh, screen here, so I thought um, in this this second week of the, um, the sort of tutorial about F sharp uh thing we'll cover some of these uh topics so function scoping rules uh, iteration and recursion lists arrays and sequences and we'll just see how 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 we go in this uh lesson um so i remember from from last week i was trying to show you an example of shadowed uh variables in f sharp and um the thing is, uh, what I didn't realize at the time was that uh, at the top level, it doesn't let you um, shadow them. So if you do something like that, and it's not this isn't in a function, then it will complain. And you can see from can you guys see the screen I'm sharing? I should have asked and checked before. <laughs> I'm assuming yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah, yeah. So you can see the squiggly line under there and it's complaining that there's a duplicate definition. So that's, that's, that's because it's not inside a function itself. Um, but it changes the rule changes if you put it inside a function. So I can say, uh, in again, and then I redefine it here and say in to in, I bind into a different value here. And then, um, I return the value. If I want to return a value from a function, I just, write the expression that I want to return. Um, so hopefully you can see that that's what's going on here. Um, I mean, I can also say for, so let's just start going to how functions work for a bit from here. So if I wanted to define another function like, uh, let, oh, um, I'm just trying to think of something. Um, age is kind of, say, let's make a general function that says, um, that prints out, for example, if you're under 18, it says you're a teenager. If you're uh, over than 60, it says maybe you're um, a pensioner, and if you're uh, between like 18 and 60, it just says you're an adult. Um, so let's define this function that says, uh, what should we call it? Um, uh, age. And it's given a, a age, um, age description, and we'll give it the age and as a number, and we'll say if age is greater than less than equal to eighteen. Then, uh, teenager. Well, might be Elif. Elif works as well. Um, age greater than eighteen. Yeah. Oops, less than sixteen. Um, so if, um, age description. Twenty, twenty-three, maybe thirty-seven. Uh, 
tally that up. Uh, Oh, what's that on there? Okay, so that should tie it up. So, uh, so this is a basic function. It takes a parameter age. You can see that the type inference figures out what the type of age is, age is based on, um, it based based on what happens afterwards. Based on this line here, it figures out that age should be an int, or, yeah. Um, and you can see when you return a function, I think in, uh, in other languages you often explicitly will type return just to say that I'm returning that value, but in F-sharp, because everything's an expression, all expressions that boil down to a value at the end of the day, and the value of this function is of type string, so what's going on here is that all of these um, essentially like you can say the last part of the expression forms the return value you don't have to explicitly return uh, type return and importantly the important thing to notice is that it, you can't early return from a function so a lot of uh, other languages you might have statement oriented languages you'll say something like um you might you might be able to uh for maybe i should explain that and when, when i talk about loops and returning from within a loop in other languages you can just exit the loop early um with a return but in f sharp you generally don't do that um, you have to sort of complete the expression and define the whole thing first um Yeah, so it forces you to think more about what you're actually saying and what you're actually writing. Um, what else should I mention about functions? There's quite a lot to say that I could say about functions, I think. Um, does anyone... Oh, and also note that uh, we went over this, I think, last week, is that uh, F-sharp uses a space to separate parameters, which is why we actually put the parentheses on the, um, surrounding the, the, the expression itself that we want to, uh, to evaluate. Um, so, this is why, this might look a bit um, different from other languages you're used to. Uh, does anyone have any questions about it so far? I have none so far. No? Okay. Alright. Um, okay. Uh, <coughs> do you, Faiza, do you know, um, I think you are you familiar with things like um, iteration and recursion or loops. Uh, I know loops, but not iteration. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So, uh, loop is a loop is iteration. Recursion is uh, something else. Um, so when people say iteration, um, they're talking about loops. So that's the same thing. Um, okay. Uh, so the other thing is, so if, another thing I should probably mention about functions is that um, it might look a bit w weird, but um, it's probably best to just uh, give you an example of it, but um, if I say let foo equal um, 
transfer, and then we want to call it. You might think that just typing foo will, uh, the first time, okay, so I, I've sort of applied foo or called foo once here, and you see the output here. So you might expect that, oh, if I do it again, I'll get this as foo, but I don't. So what's going on here? Um, it's it's interesting. It's all that's happened here is that foo is a value that's been bound to this type unit. You can see over there. Um, don't worry about that now. Oh, we should probably cover this now. What unit types are because it's kind of important. Um, so. It might be surprising that you would have. Ex it might be surprising that it didn't print out uh, this is foo again. But what F sharp is doing here, it's saying that oh, I figured out what the value of this function is. The value is essentially um, the value of this function is essentially of type unit. It's basically nothing. Unit's another way of saying um, the value is nothing. And also n note that the value of this function is not, it's not the string here, this is foo. This is just output that's gone to, gone to the console or standard art. The actual value of this function is, is unit. So, um, that means, for example, if I was to say, uh, let x equal foo, and I was to print, say, what x is, I don't get anything. Um, but if I look at the the value of it again, it's of type unit. It's not this is foo. That's just something that happens as a side effect, and it's printed out to the to the console. So how do I? But generally, you want these side effects to happen. So how do I? What I really want is to be able to type foo and have do something. So how do I do that? So the trick is to specify a parameter. The parameter can be anything. In this case, I'm giving it the unit um, parameter, the unit value, I should say. Foo the function. I should this is foo the value. That's probably what it's called. And if I define that and I call it again, this is for the function. And if I do it again, I'll get what I wanted. So this is how you essentially will write a function that doesn't need any parameters. Um, obviously, if you want a function with parameters, you can put them in here like that and now you've got a parameter with three a function with three parameters and um, we can write them out as like this um, the Um, so that's just a multi-parameter function and it, you can, obviously you can call it multiple times. Um, and, and get some, get a result back. But, um, again, what, what, what you need, what's important here is that the result of this is still unit. Um, if you look at the type signature of foo, it looks a bit complicated. It, oh, it's kind of interesting. It's not that complicated, this one. But you can see the resulting type at the after the last arrow is unit. And you can see that F sharp's filled in the, filled in the blanks, so to speak. So it's figured out that these generic parameters, sort of probably going, going into more detail than, than I wanted to, but 
um, the generic parameters a, b, and c have been uh, type have been resolved by type inference to be in string and float. Um, yeah. So. Does anyone have any anything they want to ask? Um, can you explain it one more time? I'm still a bit confused. Uh, what part are you confused about the generic parameters or type yes. in, type inference? Yeah, okay. Um, so with with, um, with a lot of other languages, you'll specifically you'll explicitly um, if you, if a function has a parameter, you'll explicitly type in um, uh, you'll you'll explicitly give the parameter a name. Right, so you'll say, okay, so in this case, I've created a function called add to that adds two to an integer. I I want x to be an integer, so I've explicitly specified it as an integer there. That's that's not using type inference. Type inference is a feature of the language that lets you do something like this x equals uh, before uh, yeah before I do that let's show let's let's show you what the types are here so if I hover over add to you can see that x is an int so the compilers figured out that x is an integer and it's figured out that this function has to return an integer it's actually figured all of that out so if I was to so if we look at this you'll you'll notice that the function has a return type and the return types an integer and if we also look at this you can see that it's got a parameter x that's an integer but in in this case we've also specified the type of the parameter x we said we want x to explicitly be uh, be an integer. Uh, what we can also do is we can explicitly specify the return type of this function in the same way that we can explicitly specify the, in the same way we explicitly specified the um, the type of the parameter x. So if I was to say that, that's still the same definition essentially as what I had before. It's just that in this case I've told F sharp that um, I know what I want to return and I'm not relying on the uh, type inference algorithm to figure it out. Um, so you can explicitly specify types like that. But the other thing what type inference lets you do is it lets you just not have to type so much. It, it lets you just write something like this, similar to what you might do in Python or some, or, or, or can't think of any other dynamically typed, another dy type, dynamically typed language. I'm not sure about R, uh, how types work in R. Um, but so what's gone on here is I've defined add to without using any types and you can see that the uh, compiler itself has figured out what the type should be. So it said my parameter x should be an integer and add to is a function that is returning an int. And if you look here, we've got the same, the same, the same things um, have been, I guess, worked out by the by the uh, type inference algorithm. Does that does that help? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So there'll be um, there'll be times when you're using it and you like I don't think that will compile because that will say that that's a float. So this is just basically a type mismatch. Uh, um, I mean, if I was just to return two, that would be bad because I'm expecting an integer here. 
um, the return type of the thing is an integer. Uh, but here I've, I've typed in a floating point number and that's not going to work. So the compiler complains because you've got a, got a type mismatch. Types are very important in F sharp. In fact, a lot of programming is just really, it's really like about making sure your types are, are defined properly because what you're doing when you're programming is you're writing a proof, you're writing a, a, a proof, um, for the compiler to execute, to ensure that, um, like in gen that the logic of your program is correct um and if that's if the compiler can the thing about f sharp is that it's it's a language that lets you lets you um it lets you push a lot of the logic checking to the compiler if you use the type system correctly whereas a lot of other languages they just don't have that property at all um and, and that's one of the great things about using F sharp. Like when I use it, I can cut down on a lot of unit testing. Um, it, it, it just helps. You'll see, you'll see it when we go into discriminated unions and how those work and then how you can use that to, um, do domain driven design. So how you can use the language and discriminated unions to, for example, uh, model a business problem very, uh, just very elegantly and very, very concisely. Um, it's like one of F sharp's, uh, strong points or its bread and butter is its ability to model, uh, model the domain of a business problem. Like it's, it's, it's very clean. It's very, and it's very easy to communicate about you can use what you've written and go talk to like a business analyst or someone who has, who has knowledge about the business and show them what you've done in F sharp and they can kind of like look at it and read it and they'll understand, Oh, and they'll understand what you're talking about. They don't need to know anything very, they need to, they don't need to know much about programming at all or about software development to, to, to try and understand. They don't need to know about classes. They don't need to know about inheritance. You know, they don't need to know about polymorphism. They don't need to about, know about any of that. Um, yeah, but we'll get to that later. Um, but, but the way to get there is to understand how important types are essentially in F sharp. Um, so may have gone on a bit much there, but, uh, so where was I, this here has a float, so it's complaining if I changed, ah, uh, I'm oh, I almost gave away the answer, but let, let's ask a question to you guys. How could I change? this function so that this type error doesn't happen anymore. Oh. Anyone? Um, you mean the, I mean, don't we just remove the 2.0, make it a two? Yeah, that's one way. Is there another way? Like say I wanted two point, say I wanted to return a float. Oh, oh, um, X, okay. um, float instead of int over there. This one, and then... or, or what if I just want to return a float? Could you could mean you just... change, change it here or here? Wouldn't you have to do both? Uh, no, no, you just need to do that. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not using X. This is just, it's not actually, oh. I will, if I do that at the moment, yeah, then yeah. Then I'll need to change it here, if that's what you meant. Um, but, like, the way it was, I was just simply returning a, returning a float, a returning, yeah, returning a float, so I needed this type here to match what I was returning. That's all. Um, yeah. Um, 
So it's pretty, uh, and the thing is you can rely on type inference. So over here we haven't relied on type inferen inference. Um, over here we have, and like I can do something like this, and it should change it to floats. So you can see, because it's figured out that 2.0 is a float, so everything else must be a float. <coughs> um, so you can you can do it both ways. You can be explicit about the types, and sometimes you have to, um, just because the compiler won't figure it out all the time. Essentially. So, um, that's a bit about type inference and functions. Um, I guess we can go on and talk about loops and iterations, so, um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty easy to just define a loop, so, if you just say for i in 1 to 10 do oh, do okay, and then that will print out the numbers 1 to 10 so that's um basically an iter this is iteration a for loop um this is also, again, this is also an expression. So I can say let uh, for i n, let me just And then if I type my loop, what it'll get, it should have, what is my loop? It's just a unit. Yeah, so it looks like four, four expressions will just return a, a unit type, which basically means nothing. If I, I wonder what happens if I do this. I don't think it will do what I, I think it will still be a unit, to be honest. It won't be an array unless you yield the values. So... I think this will work. So if I want it to be the array or the yield, it, ha oh, it has to be in the list. Yeah. Okay. Never mind. Probably getting going too fast here. So. Um. Maybe we'll talk about arrays and lists. So let's go to lists. So list. Are you guys familiar with arrays and lists? You've heard those words before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so a list is essentially a. It doesn't have random access. That's the basic difference between that and a list and an, an, an array. Um, an array you can always index into the element um, by by its index, whereas with a list you have to iterate over each one. So a list is defined in um, F sharp as for the following syntax. So that will give me a list. And I can, it'll, sh it'll show it there. Um, uh, so,
the way we um, typically work with lists is uh, there's a list module so basically there's a list module and it's got a bunch of functions in it that you can see over here uh, and they do all sorts of um, things to manipulate the data um, so for example if we want to transform the list so say I wanted to uh, double each value in this list there's a function called uh, map and it's more it's map is a function that takes a function as a parameter so if I wanted to find a, these are called lambda functions probably getting going too fast again um, do you guys know what uh, have you heard of lambda functions before or is that a new term a uh, new term for me new term okay and yoja um i've heard of it uh but i can't recall what it means i know it has to do with data science or python but i just can't remember oh okay okay so yeah uh, it's, it's basically a function without a name um and like you know how you you can pass you can pass data and values into a function so if i go back here to this add function uh this here is a value that i've passed into a function into this add function x it's just a value it doesn't have any behavior it's not doing anything so but with a language a functional language like f sharp you can you can basically treat functions as data as well so i can um define a function that takes another function as a parameter okay and that that might be confusing for you guys because uh, most of the time with when you start off programming you don't do that sort of thing you you're you, you you're defining a function and then you put values into the box that the function is you don't put more boxes you know into the box so what um what map does map is a function itself that takes another function as a parameter so you can see it here in its uh, definition um if you look at what it says there it says val map and then underneath it it says mapping and list so mapping is the fu is the function and the type signature there is that um, apostrophe t to apostrophe u so it looks very abstract it probably doesn't mean anything to you but all it's saying is that mapping is a is a function that takes something off type uppercase t and maps it to another type of uppercase u okay and then the following i'll show you what how that uh, becomes more specific in a few moments i'll show you sp the specific instance of that and list is just the input list so let's see how would i how can i define a how can i define a mapping function so if i was to say let's um mult to x equal two times x I could pull mult to here with my list. So <clears throat> so what i've what this means is that mult2 is the mapping function 
So if we look at map, we've passed it a function called mult multi. I'll call it multiply two. Just makes it easier to know what's going on. Multiply two. And map understands that it takes um, <clears throat> this function and it's going to use it on every element in the given list. So what it's done is it's mapped each element of the original list through this function. So one will go in here in, into X and comes back as two. Two is the next element in, in the list. We put two in here, inside x, two times two is four, then we get four. Then we go to the next element in the input list, it's three, three times two is six, and that's our <coughs> result. So that's what, um, that's how a lot of these these functions inside the list module work and that's how you operate on them um so here's a uh, well the answer right there so our, our mapping function is uh if you look at the definition there it says apostrophe t apostrophe u uh what what does that mean to you guys like Um, I'm not really sure what one apostrophe means. Okay, it's just, um, a way to say, uh, it's just, it's just a way to say, I don't care what this type is. Oh, uh, okay. And I'm just labeling it. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and it's the same with you, but I've called it apostrophe you because... If I used apostrophe T, it would mean that they both have to be the same when it's resolved, when the type um, parameter is resolved. Okay, that makes sense. So what's going on here is the type inference engine is saying, oh, I've got, um, I'm, I, I'm allowed to resolve these two different types, but it's okay if they're the same. Um, and it's resolved it to be, you can see, um, under generic parameters, it's resolved apostrophe T to be an int and apostrophe U to be an int. And then it's also said that list, if you look at where it says list, um, it says that list apostrophe T, which means list, the elements of the list have to be of type, whatever apostrophe T is. And in this case, it's an integer and the elements of U have to be whatever apostrophe U is. In this case, it's an integer. Um, so, I mean, this could be different. Uh, we, we could actually, um, do something like this and because it, the definition, this will work. Um, convert it to flow it. Yeah, that does work. Okay. So if we look at it now, let's see. This should change. So now we should see different um, uh, type inference type values for apostrophe t and u so let's go back here yeah what do you know amazing so apostrophe u has now been resolved to be a, f a float so what happened here was that our input list was was strictly integers but our result values are float I, I i made a few changes here to just do that just to show that they the different types t and u can be different they don't have to be the same um 
if mapping was defined as apostrophe t arrow apostrophe t then this wouldn't um wouldn't compile as it is because one it would they'd, they'd, they'd both either have to be floats or they'd both either they'd both have to be integers um any questions so far I guess that's um stuff about lists uh But uh, I'm just wondering, like, um, would you guys uh, benefit from, ha like, having some sort of uh, assignments to work on, or...? Just to test your understanding. I think it, it could be useful, um, but I'm just not sure... Okay. Uh, ...to what degree. Yeah. I'm not sure how, how how intensely you want to want to learn this. That's the thing. Um, I think it might be useful just to have like a little assignment before before class, um, or like before one of these meetings. Yeah. Okay. And then you can I'm kind of sure like that. prepare. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think, yeah. Okay. Oh. Okay. I'll see what I can. I can rustle up um because it's almost coming up to like I just want to keep these things to like 50 minutes or so and we're almost out of time so uh I just thought I'd ask and sort of ask yeah to see what what you guys thought yeah uh, I think that would yeah Um, have you guys installed uh, F Sharp and VS Code on your yeah. laptop so you can sort of experiment with it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think I'm gonna finish up up there for 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 today uh i probably don't think i covered everything i wanted to from our list uh we didn't touch on recursion so okay so i think <laughs> recursion can be hard i remember when i learned it at university it took me like two weeks for it to sink in yeah um, i remember I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, so I think given that you guys asked it would be beneficial to have some prepara preparation material beforehand, uh, maybe next week then um, we'll just focus on recursion and, and recursion and lists and that sort of thing because recursion and lists kind of go hand in hand. And I'll put together some... Uh, notes about it that you can um read i'll actually just write the notes out on my on my um on my web page i think and then I've, I've killed two birds with one stone um yeah okay um All right. Uh, do you have any other questions you want to issues you want to raise or uh, none for me? Yeah, me neither. Okay. All right. Oh well, I'll call it quits here then. Um. Thanks for joining. Um. Hope you're getting something useful out of this. And I'll I'll put this uh. I think I've got the recording right this time, so I'll put this up on YouTube and put it up on my web page blog thingy and I'll send you the links to them. Alright. Okay. I'll see you later. Oh same time next week. 
Sunday. And if you can't make awesome. it, let me know. Um, yeah, thanks. All right. Thank you. Bye.